Hey YouTubers, sorry I haven't made any videos lately. Um, I had a lot of trouble with trying to iron out the running issues with that 350 I just built that they put in that 1990 TBI truck. Um, I will try to get over to his house and at least get a video of the truck running. Um, so far the engine is running smooth no issues holds uh, 58 pounds of hot oil pressure uh, seems to be in good shape we've just been fighting with the TBI tune and the idle air control valve on it so anyway I apologize for not getting that thing loaded up because I think there was at least one or more people who had requested a video of that in, uh, 350 overhaul running uh, we had no problems with getting it fired but we have absolutely battled with it running too lean with the open headers and I, I do blame that on probably the O2 sensor not being efficient enough to properly uh, monitor that air fuel or adjust to that air fuel demand but that 98 factory cam and the compression on that engine should have been absolutely compatible with that TBI and the map sensor but it absolutely was trying to glow all eight header tubes on initial fire up and we battled raising the fuel pressure to try to fix that while we got the timing you know dialed in got the dual exhaust put on it which totally made it run rich so then i had to go back in lower the fuel pressure in the throttle or in the throttle body and i don't know that's just crazy but anyway i wanted to do a little bit of a video about this 1963 through 1966 Chevy truck V8 cast iron bell housing. Uh, I wanted to point out I di it did not come with the lower cover. These bell housings come with a lower bolt on section that totally encompasses the clutch and pressure plate setup this one didn't come with it I do intend to try to find one that I can utilize it's not necessarily a big deal as far as keeping dust and stuff like that out of your clutch and pressure plate assembly as it is a more safe setup um, with that T5 that I'm wanting to put in my S10 blazer behind the 4.8 LS I absolutely do not run cast aluminum bell housings um, if you've ever heard from talked to seen a video if you have a clutch explosion and that stuff can come up through the floorboard and cut your toes and your feet off or whatever it's absolutely not worth it to chance it but it truly is expensive because even your cheapest aftermarket blow through bell blow blow proof bell housings are 400 and up so my compromise is find the old like old school cast iron bell housings which are heavy but I would almost dare to say if a clutch comes apart it ain't coming out through that cast iron because it's super strong I apologize, there's a helicopter flying over, so we'll have to kind of deal with that for a second. But I found this as a deal for 80 bucks on Craigslist. I only had to drive 40 miles to Wellsville, Kansas to get it. If you've done any price shopping for even these cast iron bell housings, they're quite pricey on eBay. So I felt like I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, with the bottom part it even contains a, a clutch explosion uh, towards the ground so I will try to hunt around on Craigslist and maybe some of those local salvage yards whatever to see if I can snag that lower piece because not everybody bothers with the putting it back on because it just adds weight but I'm more concerned with safety 
and if that bottom piece doesn't hang down below you know too low below the car then I'm definitely wanting to run it so anyway I wanted to share a, 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 just a short story of why I don't I choose not to run aluminum bell housings a neighborhood kid that lived uh, three or four houses up the road from me he had an older brother and yes this is one of those my friend that lived up the streets older brother stories he had a built-up Chevelle and to this day I cannot recall but I keep wanting to say it was like a 66 through 68 Chevelle which I know is two different body styles but he had a built-up Chevelle I think it may have even been a big block it had a four speed and was like one of the faster cars like in our neighborhood uh, keep in mind Tim my friend Tim is a couple year a year or two older than me and his brother was several years older than he is so but long story short Tim's older brother had a really nice Chevelle with a four speed had uh, gone out taken his date to it was either the homecoming or prom after all the festivities or whatever he had uh, found a group of his friends talked to them for a few minutes and of course when he went to leave for the night getting ready to take his date home they all encouraged him to get on his car because of course it was badass and they wanted to see him spin out or whatever I hate to I hate to just think back on how horrible this must have been for everybody basically something let loose on the Chevelle and Tim's brother ended up totaling the car uh, the clutch either the clutch or pressure plate failed something let loose in the clutch and pressure plate area which in turn came up through the floorboard at the end of all this despair Tim's brother's girlfriend lost her life and Tim's brother lost his leg so basically the whole time I knew Tim growing up he had an older brother that basically lived in his room because he literally had a horrible time for years if not decades trying to get over the accident the loss of his leg and the loss of his girlfriend so just say I have as close to first-hand experience as you can get seeing the suffering of his brother and just the, the, the happenings of that poor night that I'm not running an aluminum bell housing because I know myself I don't intend on technically racing my vehicle but I know that I will test it from time to time and that engine will see, you know, 6,000 plus RPM. I'm not even going to gamble having a clutch or pressure plate or flywheel, anything coming through the floorboard and, and hurting me or my passengers or anything. So anyway, that is my personal experience on why I don't run aluminum bell housings. I hope this video isn't too awful shaky because I am standing here free-handed and that generally don't work that great. But I wanted to get a, a blow-proof, but it just wasn't in the budget. If I plan on actually getting this thing running soon, I can't blow five, six, you know, four hundred to six hundred dollars on a damn bell housing. It just isn't. I can't do it. So went back, found some information. I knew these old cast iron bell housings were heavy. But, you know, they're as close to a blow-proof setup as you're going to get without spending a, you know, a buttload of money. So I'm going to throw this in the S10 Blazer. From what I've seen or heard, all you have to do is open up the uh, holes on your T5 mounting uh, ears or tabs, whatever you call them, up to a half-inch diameter. And it'll bolt straight to this uh, bell housing. So, anyway, I just wanted to upload some kind of a video. Cause I really dropped the ball didn't get a video of that 1990 truck running with the overhaul 350 I haven't really been doing a whole lot of work in the shop or on the garage everybody in our house has been sick and I'm hoping that stuff's going away but you know it just takes time I guess because when you got a virus then the doctors are like well we can treat the symptoms but we can't treat the virus so anyway 
that's where I've been. That's what my plan is. Got the T5 in the garage. Got my bell housing now. I uh, did get my new, brand new 4.8 flywheel the other day. I got off eBay. So I'm collecting parts, getting ready to try to make a move on getting that motor in there. So um, sorry it's been so a long time, and I appreciate you guys watching.